Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought for Friday, the 5th of February, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Glad you could join me today. Um, today we're entering our final devotional for the book of James. We've been looking at the book of James over the past month and a little bit. And uh, we're going to be uh, finishing up here today. It's been an adventure and we've mined the scriptures to... Uh, find truths that I, I pray have been uh, beneficial to you as you walk in the Lord and grow in your in your faith. So the final passage of the scripture that we're going to be dealing with today is focused on James chapter 5 verses 19 and 20. So this is what James says, my brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back. Remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. So the question that is asked, and I think it goes back to the beginning of time with Cain and Abel, am I my brother's keeper? Is my brother or sister really my problem? Or do they just have to deal with their own mess and I deal with mine? Well, the answer is a resounding yes. We are, in fact, our brother's keepers. And our brother's and sister's problems ought to be concerns of ours. So Jesus clearly tells us in Mark 12, 31, um, that we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. And this means as children of God, that uh, we're to be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude towards one another. Um, loving one another is the second greatest command of Scripture, and it makes sense that as brothers and sisters in Christ uh, that we're supposed to do this, and this means that we ought to be concerned about one another when one of us is stumbling or having a hard time. Now, that's possible for any one of us um, to fall into patterns of wrong thinking and then having that translate into wrong living. There's times where each one of us is tempted to wander from the truth into very dangerous territory. And it doesn't matter how long we've been a Christian. We've, we need to approach life with a great deal of humility, understanding that um, if we allow ourselves to drift we can find ourselves in trouble in very short order. We have a spiritual adversary that longs to render us ineffective in our walk with Christ. And this is why Paul wrote to his young apprentice Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.16, Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And this is why it was also written by Paul in Romans 15, 1 and 2. We who are strong ought to bear with the shortcomings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good to build them up. Now there's times in life where every person, no matter how strong they are, can feel downhearted or defeated. It's precisely at that time that the Christian community is called to be there for support, to pray with that person, and to listen to that person, and to give advice where requested or required. God knows that as human beings we need this. And this is why James indicated that indeed we are our brother and sister's keepers. Now if someone of some, someone amongst us has gone off the pathway and has fallen into error, um, they essentially become casualties on the road of life. And remember in conjunction with that scripture where Jesus was asking or telling the Pharisees that, uh, uh, when they asked what the two most important commandments are, 
he said, you know, the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, when Jesus went into an illustration to to ask the question, well, then who is my neighbor? He gave the illustration of the Good Samaritan. So we know that story. There was a man laying beaten, bruised, and, you know, robbed, completely destitute, laying on the side of the road. And, you know, two people passed him by, people with great influence, you know, religious, passed him by, and, and they had other things to do. But the, the Samaritan, he, he stopped and he had compassion on this poor fellow that had been waylaid by the robbers, and, and he bandaged his wounds and, and loaded him on his ride and took him to the inn and cared for him and made sure that the innkeeper provided for him while he was out of commission and, and needing uh, a place to stay. See, that, that man, that Samaritan man, is a better neighbor to that individual than the people that were religious that passed him by. And, and it, as Christians, God calls us to be good Samaritans to the people that are on the path of life that have been broken and beaten and maybe they've you know, been careless and have been traveling the road in the wrong place at the wrong time and maybe they made acquaintances with someone that they should have known better um, was going to be the robber. And the enemy is very clever in how he um, hurts people. And um, as Christians, um, we're called to emulate the Good Samaritan. So when we see a brother or sister along the side of the road that is broken and beaten and left for dead, well, um, as Christians, we need to help them. Um, we don't just leave people to fend for themselves. We are our brother and sister's keeper. Paul gives clear instructions on how we are to do this practically, but also warns that when we get involved in someone's mess and we try to help them out when they've fallen, we need to be very careful that we as well don't fall into the trap because being human beings, we're subject to temptations and, and that sort of thing as well. So uh, Paul writes in Galatians 6, 1 and 2, Brothers, if someone is caught in a trespass, you who are spiritual should restore him with a spirit of gentleness. But watch yourself, or you also too may be tempted. Carry one another's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ is the royal law, and we've talked about this in Food for Thought already. The royal law is loving God and loving our neighbor. This is the royal law, the law of love. So James puts it this way. Remember this. Whoever turns the sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. It's interesting how God has made us as a church to operate as a close family. God delights in having us participate with him in the good work that he has, both inside and outside of the church. Without having the fellowship of other believers, um, we're at a serious disadvantage because we're, we're in a spiritual war out there. And our enemy is trying to uh, beat us down. I mean, with people's souls are at stake. When we walk side by side, um, charging against the gates of hell, um, we're going to have an attack against us. And it's interesting how, how the Romans, they actually fought battles uh, in, in unity, and that's why they were so successful. They were very unified and organized. And Christians' armor, as you know, described in Ephesians, is taken from the Roman armory. And, and, and so, so there's a lot of parallels between the Roman armor and the Christians' armor. See, the Romans were powerful, and their military tactic was that they would come at the enemy together. Uh, both offensively and defensively. The Romans were well known for their structured organization, and uh, which that, that set them apart greatly from their enemies, which were often a lot more disorganized. But the Romans, despite their organization and, and the way that they ordered themselves, they still suffered casualties. And, um, you know, there were teams 
of Romans that worked behind the scenes and within the, the, the armed forces that would care for those casualties. They were kind of like the, the first uh, Red Cross kind of people. But, you know, like the Romans would march towards an objective that they were to take. And if they came under attack from arrows... The, the Romans would march together and there would be shields linked together over and in front of and beside, quenching those arrows collectively together. But when one got through and someone got injured, they had a contingency plan to help that person. That person wasn't just kicked out and left for dead. That person was taken um, to a place where they could be uh, worked worked on and bandaged and uh, you know the, the Roman army had engineers and doctors and even architects that would design um, things and, and and this was a tactically uh, and physically strong army and, and as is the church you see we have an obligation to care for the wounded to restore those that are broken and uh, James you know says it very well if we act as good soldiers of Jesus Christ you know we're going to um, help that person and that person is going to be saved from destruction and that is part of God's plan now in the early 80s there was a, a Christian singer named Chuck Gerard and he had this song and I just wanted to quote a few lines from that in closing today. And he says this in his song. Don't shoot the wounded. They need us more than ever. They need our love no matter what it is they've done. Sometimes we just condemn them. And, they don't, and don't take time to hear their story. Don't shoot the wounded. Someday you might be one. That's something good to remember. This is Food for Thought.